All right, everyone, welcome back to another Pattern Variations tutorial. I'm Jean-Pierre, and in this video, I'm going to show some of the newer tricks that I've sort of picked up with this technique, as well as how I've revised some of my older workflow. So, for starters, I do not use Centered anymore as one of the auto-generated corner tile presets. Now I just work between, or work with, between, and sliced. So reason why is because you can do this. If I take this and copy it and bring it over and I select this portion of the pattern, go to my pattern brush and do a between and then I deselect and then reselect in the center in between these two portions. Now I have the between. So I have the centered and then the between but both of these will be applied with the between corner tile. So definitely much better working with between than centered. As you can recall, centered, it just sort of inserts another instance in between your um, anchor, your endpoints of your design, which is kind of not desirable if you're scaling it. But with between, you can scale it and you can see how Let's say I bring this up a little bit. You can see how it kind of live updates and relaxes the constraint on the design wherever it's crunching. So very useful, much more useful than centered. So that's the first tip. Now that you have those two, it's even faster to generate more. You just select both of them, drag them down come down here and then go to sliced and apply that and voila we can come down here we can apply these and literally it's still pattern variations in seconds so now that we have all of these variations we can look at them and work with them but some of the newer things that I've been doing is working with circles so first I have kind of this circle group and I'll take that and copy it and then I'll go ahead and paste a couple more of these circle groups and again you'll understand why in just a moment. So first I'll apply just the first instance right here to that and what I'll be doing is taking these instances and sort of cutting them up and using them as new patterns like so, to place in the brushes. So first I'll grab this one and I'll paste it. And I'll take this, I'll go to non-uniform and I will scale it down to 50% vertical. So now that kind of crunches it. So anytime you change the vertical um, size of your pattern, it will also affect how much is drawn in the center of the uh, of the pattern. So if I shrink it vertically, you'll see the change when we apply it to the same circle. So I'll go in here, I'll go to between, and I'll just take this and I'll apply it to all three of these. So this is the same circle. This circle's only a tiny bit larger than this one here is only a tiny bit larger than this one. And so when I apply all these, you can see that we have more of a balance. So if you don't want this stretching or constraint on the image, then you can just decrease the vertical height and there we go, we have something a little bit more balanced. And then if you decrease the size to about 70%, you'll get something like this. So again, if you were to just increase the size of this, you'll see it, it will just update and it'll just add more instances along that circle. So basically what I've done is I've just shrunk down this circle so that it has two instances of our pattern drawn. And then for here, this circle only has one instance. 
So it's basically taking this edge right here and taking these two endpoints and then wrapping them so they meet. So now you have something that looks a lot like polar coordinates in uh, Photoshop. So if you don't know what that looks like, it kind of looks like this, where you just take the um, whatever the original was and then you go over to filter, distort, polar coordinates, and hit OK, and there you go. So here we have an even better version of that. So that's something that you can definitely play with. And again, since it's between, it will update depending on what size it is. So you can see how it will slowly start to change, which can be very interesting and can really give you some more ideas. So definitely, definitely experiment with that. But what I'll do is I'll take a look and see which versions of these I would want to use to expand. So I like I like the way this looks. It looks like most of my lines are pretty pretty even. So they don't look like they're really thin here or really thick there. They look pretty even. So what I'll do is I'll take this group, I'll copy it, I'll paste it here. I'll go to expand appearance. And now that the experience has, uh, appearance has been expanded, I can go ahead and just ungroup all of these. So now it's ungrouped and I can come in here. I ungrouped it too many times. Alright, so now we just have this. So I'll ungroup it one more time and here we have just these tops that we're going to use and then we're going to use these sides. So I'll take that, I'll copy it, bring it down, I will rotate it 90 degrees, or actually I'll do negative. And now we have some newer sort of envelope distorted or envelope or warped versions of our pattern that we can use to put in our pattern all over again. So what I'll do now is I'll just organize them over here. And I'll do the same process for all of these. First, by making sure they fit in my boundary box. So I'll grab a copy of my boundary box. And I'll group it back together. And then I'll go ahead and align them so it's centered. And then make sure it meets those edges. That looks good. And of course, you can always cut things off or you know, experiment. But now we have this, I can ungroup it, I can take it and plug it right back in to the whole process. So first I'll start with this particular version and then I'll grab that side, bring it over here, make sure it aligns and then grab this version and place it in the auto between. And then I'll take these two over here and I will drag them down, duplicate them. I'll apply the sliced. And I'll come over here, remove all of these, and apply our new ones. So now we can take a look at what the new one looks like. So now we have some very different looking designs that we can kind of explore and work with. So it's definitely a great idea, idea starter. It's like basically farming ideas um, with this process. And what's nice is that because it's kind of arced like this, you can take one of these, bring it over, and can sort of see what it would look like to create some newer circles because of that arc. So definitely more 
variety with this technique. And if you apply it to all four of these different sections, you'll see a really interesting result. So we can go ahead and plug it through our circle engine over here. And I'll just take this, bring it back so that it aligns right up nicely. can copy it, bring it over here, scale it down non-uniform 50% and make a pattern out of that. And here we are. And so now you can see it's sort of done it all over again where it's flipped it back over, but now it's curved these ends. So you can definitely continue to um, put, put each and every one of your singular first designs through this process over and over and over again, if you'd like, and you can get a whole bunch of variety out of just one design. So you can fill all of these up and then keep going. I could take these if I like the way this looks, you know, that actually turned out um, interesting and it might give me an idea for something new so a lot of variety and last point is that because these are singular versions if you cut them up by just simply drawing a rectangle from your center so I go to my anchor point come here I can bring this over here match it to the center and then I'll take these and I'll go to object expand appearance I'll copy and paste another rectangle and then just select one of these and pull it over here. And so now you can make a clipping mask, you can make a clipping mask here, and you can copy and paste another copy, bring it over, and again, even more variety from just that one initial design. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I will have more topics to cover. Next in the video series, I'll be covering rotational symmetry. And that one is going to be very fun. You can get a lot of different interesting things that come out of that. So stay tuned in. If you like the video, make sure you give it a like, comment if you have any ideas or questions. and subscribe. Thank you very much to all my patrons who make all of these tutorials possible. If you'd like to visit my Patreon, definitely take a look. The link will be in the description below, and I hope you have a fantastic day.